Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. I am Father Rufino Ezama, the Provincial Superior of the Comboni Missionaries. Thank you for listening to Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. 740 WNOP Newport, 910 WPFB Middletown, or get the app, stream, podcast, and more at sacredheartradio.com. Tuesday, the 26th of March, Tuesday of Holy Week, Fig Tuesday, and with recovery efforts underway in Baltimore, I'll pray what I pray every time I see a first responder go by, and that is this, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as I was, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. It's a better way to continue through your Holy Week. A lot of crazy things going on in the world. We'll try and keep you up to date, try and get your perspective on this week where we head into the Triduum uh, in just uh, a matter of a, a day or so here. And uh, praying that uh, we all as a, as a family together can enter more deeply into the mysteries of Holy Week. I'm Matt Swaim. Anna Mitchell has news. Paul Lockman at the controls. And up this hour... Uh, we're going to talk to Stephanie Mann, get some final thoughts from Thomas Moore. He's been one of our traveling companions this Lent, and uh, hear what he's got to say about the idea of uh, forgiving enemies. Uh, we'll also check in with Marlon De La Torre from knowingisdoing.org uh, and uh, a whole lot more. So please do stay with us if you can. Right now, it is two minutes past. Here's Anna Mitchell with news. Good morning. The U.S. Supreme Court today will hear oral arguments in a case that the U.S. bishops say could have major implications for accessibility of the abortion pill. The bishops have encouraged the faithful to pray through June when the court's decision is expected. They said in a statement, quote, while the Supreme Court case is not about ending chemical abortion, it can restore limitations that the FDA has overridden. The bishops are encouraging prayer through the intercession of St. Joseph. The Texas Department of Public Safety is clarifying how they would enforce a new immigration law if it's allowed to go into effect. A spokesman says troopers would only ar arrest illegal migrants they see crossing the Rio Grande River. He pushed back against interior enforcement, saying they would not check a driver's immigration status during traffic stops. They, there are no geographical constraints. It allows judges to order immediate deportations. A federal appeals court has put the law on hold as suits play out. Pope Francis has written a message to young people to mark the fifth anniversary of his apostolic exhortation, Christus Vivut. From Vatican Radio, Devin Watkins reports. Recalling his apostolic exhortation written after the 2018 Synod on Young People, the Pope noted again that Christ is alive and he wants you to be alive. He said his message seeks to inspire young people to renew their hope, despite the many difficulties and challenges presented by our world filled with conflict and suffering. The Pope invited them to walk with Christ as a friend, welcome him into your life, and let him share all the joys and hopes, the problems and struggles of this time in your life. He went on to remind young people of the great mission they have received to bear witness before everyone to the joy born of friendship with Christ. The Pope also pointed to his invitation for young people to make a mess or hagan lío in Spanish in their efforts to evangelize and live the Christian life. Living in the presence of Jesus, the Pope said, will allow their memory of the past to prove fruitful and help them find courage in the present and face the future with hope. 
The exhortation Christus Vivit Pope Francis added is the fruit of a church that wants to move forward together by listening and in dialogue. He said the result of the 2018 Synod on Youth eventually prepared the way for the current Synod on Synodality. Now at this new stage in our ecclesial journey, the Pope said, we need more than ever to draw upon your creativity in order to explore new paths, always in fidelity to our roots. Reminding young people that they are the living hope of the Church on the Move, Pope Francis thanked them for their presence in and contribution to the life of the Church. He concluded his message by encouraging young people to embrace their own particular way of living and proclaiming the joy of the risen Christ. I'm Devin Watkins. The central plains and upper Midwest are getting pounded by strong winds and heavy snow. The National Weather Service said some areas could see up to a foot of snowfall by tomorrow evening. Central Nebraska, eastern South Dakota, and northern Minnesota are expected to see an inch to two inches of snowfall per hour. The NWS said the conditions could make travel, quote, nearly impossible at times. The storm will also likely cause power outages and tree damage. There's an ongoing multi-agency rescue operation underway in Baltimore after a container ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge. A massive collapse followed as the ship then caught fire and sank. A number of vehicles are reported to have fallen into the water, but there's been no word on any deaths or injuries. The incident is being treated as a mass casualty event. New home sales dip slightly in February as mortgage rates remain high. Figures from the Commerce Department show sales of new single-family homes slipped three-tenths of a percent below January's revised annual rate. And the Sweet 16 is set in the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament. It's mostly chalk with number one seeds South Carolina, Iowa, Texas, and USC all moving on with three number two seeds remaining, UCLA, Notre Dame, and Stanford. All four number three seeds are still alive as well. We'll see how it goes. Uh, women's basketball, much bigger deal this year than, uh, well, yeah. than in years previous. I Yeah, well, I mean, you know, Caitlin Clark making the, a lot of Caitlin headlines. Clark of train. Course. Yeah. Indeed. 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 Well, uh, like I say, uh, there's a lot of basketball to see this weekend there's a lot of baseball to see this weekend but uh, i'm gonna be dialed in it'll all still be there mm-hmm. on sunday it's true it'll it all still true. be there well and i can keep you up to date in the news anyway that's true i mean really all i gotta do is listen to the last like 20 seconds of your newscast and i'm covered i'll give you a, i'll give you the important updates and then uh once easter season hits you mm-hmm. know i'll dial back in i'll dial mm-hmm. all back in there you go We thank you for joining us on this Fig Tuesday, the 26th of March. Right now, it is seven minutes past the hour. Stephanie Mann now joining us from Supremacy and Survival. That's her blog where she covers all kinds of great stuff from English Catholic history. Stephanie, good morning. Good morning. So we are uh, really kind of wrapping up our conversation with Thomas Moore. He's been our... Uh, one of our many friends we've spent a lot of time with this Lent. And here, as we prepare to watch Jesus be betrayed, and then forgive his enemies from the cross. Mm -hmm. Um, He keys in on the story of Joseph the Patriarch. Why? Yes. Well, I think this is uh, the source, as I say in my blog post, of of Thomas More's ability to love his enemies and to wish all those even condemned to death that they would all meet merrily in heaven somehow. Because he says that his last grace that he asked God to give him is that he would be able to think my most enemies, my best friends, for the brethren of Joseph could never have done him so much good with their love and favor as they did him with their malice and hatred. And of course, he's talking about the patriarch Joseph from Genesis and, and of Egypt and, and of the whole beginning of the uh, the the impetus for the exodus and the coming to the to the promised land through Moses and and uh, that great uh, migration of the fact that because his brothers were so envious of him that they sold him into slavery to uh, and and he ended up in Egypt that actually out of that came great blessings for not only he not only Joseph but for them 
and so it's it's a I think it's a meditation that that we can have, like you say, during this week when we see that Jesus is betrayed by Judas, uh, denied by Peter, and abandoned by everyone except except John. Ultimately, that the same kind of happy fault from all those uh, who fail him uh, leads to our salvation. And this is the same thing that that uh, Thomas More is is reflecting on with the figure of of Joseph. Well, in some ways, Thomas More is an icon of it himself, right? Uh, yes. Is, you know, so you see Joseph uh, betrayed by those closest to him, and it turns out that th- because of this betrayal, he's now uh, sort of brought to new life uh, as second in command in Egypt and able then to save yes. the people who harmed him. Jesus is the ultimate icon of this, right? Who is betrayed yes. by those closest to him and abandoned by uh, the rest and then rises to new life and saves us all. And Thomas More, right, betrayed by those closest to him. He and the king were friends, right? He and King Henry VIII yes. were close. And uh, now, mm-hmm. through his intercession, I mean, just think of all the beautiful fruit that has come, uh, the, the, the beautiful stories that have come through uh, those who have been strengthened by his witness through the centuries. Yes, the, the example of the martyr... Uh, I mean, in some ways, Jesus is a martyr, but the example of a of a human martyr like St. Thomas More is that he shows us, first of all, I think th- throughout this whole godly meditation, he shows us how you prepare to be a martyr in a way, how you prepare to have the strength to stand up for your for your faith. Uh, even even to death, maybe not to death, maybe just to some kind of persecution or some kind of unfriending or cancellation by friends and, and abandonment by those. Especially, particularly, we know that those who are received into the church during Holy Week, during, uh, during the Easter Vigil, they often find themselves uh, abandoned by their friends because they can't understand how they could become Catholics. And so they have to deal with that within their families and friendships. So he is offering us that great example of of how to be prepared to stand up for your faith even if it does lead to some kind of death because there will be a resurrection from it there will be greatness from it that comes from that uh, that sacrifice well, there's a twofold thing there stephanie and uh to get beyond yes. the history into the personal stuff uh it's one thing to stand up for your faith and be willing to face persecution it's another thing altogether to forgive the ones who are pushing back on you i feel like uh, yes. Depending on where you hang out on the internet or where you're, uh, you know, whatever, yes. everybody's pretty good at that first thing, you know, being willing to mm-hmm. take a stand and put the other people who are wrong in their place. Mm-hmm. But then to turn around and, uh, you know, have a heart of charity for them or express love and affection for them or yes. to to pray for for their good. And instead of just thinking about like, well, how can I own this person in the next comment thread? I mean, that is where the struggle right. really comes. And that's where when I read Thomas More's Godly Meditation that talks about how he's working through this himself, it is so helpful to yes. me personally. Yes, because here he is, you know, facing death, he knows, either in prison or on the block or, or at Tyburn, being hanged, drawn, and quartered. And he is thinking of the fact that this is pro- this may be providential for him. This may be his way again through his, especially through his godly meditation, his preparation for death, to see heaven and to be in heaven, and then to work to actually wish that those who are betraying him, condemning him, questioning him, threatening him, that they would all meet merrily in heaven. That not just his, not just the family that have stood by him, even though they didn't understand exactly what he was doing. But but those enemies that they're his best friends in a way they've done more for him, like the brethren of Joseph did, than through this betrayal than they could have if they'd been nice to him and let him, uh, you know, be free in a way. That this is this is going to be the cause of his salvation and his resurrection is through their betrayal. So yes, it is remarkable, and it's a it's a good it is a good example that he gives us, like you say, to somehow, even in the midst of conflict and disagreement, ultimate disagreement in this case, to uh, be forgiving and be charitable and remember their best good, not just yours. Yeah, and when he talks about that idea of his, he and his former colleagues, his friends and family, 
to all be able to meet merrily in heaven someday. This is where this is where Christianity gets weird, right? This is the weird thing about Christianity yes. that isn't present in all the other kind of ways of thinking about the world. The goal is not to see our enemies destroyed. The goal is to dine with our enemies at the wedding feast, <laughs> you know? And that's yes. that's a, that's a very difficult thing for us to kind of wrap our minds around in a pugilistic, you know, infighting, polarized society to want to be in heaven with the people who are across the aisle from us politically or across the aisle yes. from us in some theological yeah. dispute. May we want that. Like, I pray, yes. right, through the intercession of Thomas well, More that we will desire that. Right, because remember, Thomas More is also, he is asking God for this grace because this is hard. Mm -hmm. It's not, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't do this lightly. He's not doing, and it's, it's not, uh, uh, he's not being sarcastic or or even lying about it. He needs the help of God so that he can fulfill that wish and carry it through and believe it and 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 do it. And so he has to ask that grace too. So not only is he an example in the fact that he does it, but he's an example in the fact that he knows the source of the strength that he needs to be able to do it. And it's not not it's not in him. It's in God. It's in God's grace, because God, like as you alluded to, says from God, Jesus Christ from the cross says, "Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do." And in a way, you could say that Joseph could say, "Father," speaking to Jacob or and to God, "Forgive my brethren, because they know not what they do." In fact, what they're doing is setting up their own salvation in the same way that Jesus is praying from the cross. Intense stuff, powerful stuff from St. Thomas More by, by way of Stephanie Mann. You can find Stephanie linked at sunrisemorningshow.com there in the show notes. While you're there, check out our video feed. You can uh, chat with us on Facebook and YouTube through that. We're back with headlines after this. It's 16 minutes past the hour. Do you feel as though life is flying past you? Are you desperate for a way to find moments of peace and quiet? Lord, teach me to pray. The free Ignatian prayer series will open your heart to his voice, to the peace you're seeking, and the only love that fulfills the human heart, Jesus. God is calling you to true joy, knowing Jesus personally. Lord, teach me to pray is free. Just go to lordteachmetopray.com and click on the red box. That's lordteachmetopray.com. Central Fabricators is proud to support the Sunrise Morning Show, where you'll get news from the Catholic perspective while keeping you up to date on what's happening in the Vatican as well. It's also a great way to keep in touch with the Catholic faith throughout the week. Central Fabricators, based in Cincinnati, Ohio, is a family-owned business for over 75 years, manufacturing and repairing corrosion-resistant storage tanks, reactors, and pressure vessels. On the web at centralfabricators.com. That's centralfabricators.com. Business owners are starting to think outside the box to find new customers. You can reach millions of engaged Catholic listeners by underwriting The Sunrise Morning Show. Each weekday morning, listeners across the U.S. and around the globe can hear your message for your business, ministry, or nonprofit on The Sunrise Morning Show. To find out how it works, email me, Leah, at sacredheartradio.com. That's Leah, at sacredheartradio.com. Bible in a Year with me, Father Mike Schmitz, is now available right here on Catholic Radio. Encounter God's voice and learn how to live life through the lens of Scripture with a new episode every day. I hope you'll join me as we discover how the story of salvation unfolds and how we fit into that story today. Bible in a Year and Catechism in a Year with Father Mike Schmitz, tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific on EWTN Radio. 18 past. Here's Anna with headlines. The U.S. Supreme Court today will hear oral arguments in a case involving the abortion pill and the drug mifepristone. Pope Francis has written a message to young people to mark the fifth anniversary of his apostolic exhortation, Christus Vivut. And yesterday, he met with the Nigerian community of Rome, encouraging them to embrace unity and reject division. And we are, of course, praying for all of you in Baltimore uh, and praying for the families of those who are missing and praying for the rescue and recovery efforts after the Key Bridge collapse yeah. uh, overnight. Pretty scary stuff 
Yeah, it's so, uh, terrifying pictures. Um, praying for all first responders, praying for those trapped, uh, that that good things will, will come and that God's uh, God's will be done. Yeah, it's a uh, pretty uh, pretty tough thing to wake up to. Mm-hmm. Um, I but, imagine. But uh, it is, it's Fig T- Tuesday, Anna Mitchell. Uh, yeah. Every day of Holy Week except for Monday has a special name. Uh, and Fig Tuesday... Uh, tomorrow is Spy Wednesday. Then we get into the you know Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday. But Fig Tuesday is kind of an interesting and sort of mysterious sort of reality, I guess. Wow, when Jesus curses the fig tree. And the fig tree wasn't even really supposed to be in season at the time, if I recall. Mm-hmm. He cursed it because it was not bearing fruit. Um yeah, it's a it's a very interesting prelude to uh, to the events of Holy Week. Yeah, and of course, again tomorrow is Spy Wednesday, and that's uh, named so because that is when Judas turns Jesus over uh, and agrees to betray him, mm-hmm. and then everything sort of rolls forward from there. Yep. So keep attuned to EWTN for all kinds of great Holy Week programming as we dive into this season. It's 21 past. Have you been to sacredheartradio.com this hour to check on the ever-increasing total toward our $120,000 goal? We're getting close because during the membership drive, we had 145 listeners become new members. What about you? Isn't it time to make a sound investment to ensure access to the truth? To join now, visit sacredheartradio.com and click donate or use Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. Thanks. And to make more members, tell everyone about Sacred Heart Radio and the Sacred Heart Radio app. Why wait in endless lines at the pharmacy when Brozart Pharmacy, a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio, can fill your prescriptions in a timely manner with high quality. Brozart Pharmacy, fast, friendly service without the wait at brosartpharmacy.com. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Twin Dental of Cincinnati. Since 1986, twin brothers, doctors David and Michael Rothen have been providing superior dental care in a relaxed and comfortable setting for the entire family. The twin dental doctors utilize advanced dentistry techniques from sedation to implants and the latest in cosmetic options to preserve and beautify smiles. Twin Dental, located just off the I-275 exit at Hamilton Avenue. For a complimentary evaluation, 513-825-6111 and online at twindental.com. I'm Guy. I'm Mara. And I'm Patrick. And we're the Cagney family with Coldwell Banker Realty. We support Sacred Heart Radio. And we help buyers and sellers trying to find their dream homes in Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, and Florida. 513-347-1888 to talk to the Cagney family. I'm Bill Torbeck of Tri-State Abrasive and Tool Company, proud to support Sacred Heart Radio. Diamond and CBN are the most advanced cutting tools because they're the hardest materials known. These enable you to machine three to eight times faster compared to carbide while reducing downtime for tool changes by 90%. Improve your productivity when machining hard, cast, and powdered metals or difficult-to-machine materials. Find out more at TheAbrasiveOne.com. That's the number one, TheAbrasiveOne.com. It's 23 minutes past the hour. You're listening to the Sunrise Morning Show on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network. Happy to have you along with us on this Fig Tuesday, Tuesday of Holy Week. Marlon De La Torre is joining us again on the Sunrise Morning Show. He's Senior Director of the Department of Evangelization for the Diocese of Columbus. He writes at knowingisdoing.org. Good morning, Marlon. Go Bucks. Good morning, Annie. Go Bucks. So, Marlon, at every Mass, we proclaim as Catholics the death and resurrection of God, our Lord mm. Jesus Christ. And this is something, of course, that we bring into total focus during mm. Holy Week and Easter. And we're going to talk about why today. So, mm. let's start with this. We say that Jesus did this to save us. From mm-hmm. our sins, but what mm-hmm. does that mean? I mean, how is sin a slavery from which we need to be saved? Sure, a great, great intro. I, th- I think the the proposition of the church that we have something on us, or there's something that inhibits us from seeing good or from performing good acts. Really, it's it's what's called sin, 
in a very simple way. And so when you want someone to enact goodness or you want someone to, to act in a, in a certain way uh, that's loving, that's caring, that's sacrificial, well, uh, there's a grace to that. But what if something impedes it? And what if somebody can come and say, you know what, I can offer you the opportunity to make sure that doesn't impede your ability to love uh, God, to love your neighbor, to love your mother, your father, your, your husband, your, your spouse, your wife, or what have you. What if I give you that proposal? And that's essentially what we encounter when we say that, that Christ came to save us from our sins, that, that God made a proposal to man, said, look, you rejected me once, but I'm giving you the opportunity to not reject me again and to make it more permanent. And, and that's where his son comes into play, which is a fascinating proposition if you look at it from an outside perspective of an irreligious person. And you look at it and say, hmm, all right, if you're giving the opportunity to to look at good and, and do goodness or behave in a good manner, but also seek something which is far greater than I can ever imagine, this, this unity of faith or this uh, heaven, so to speak, hmm, I might just take you up on that. And that's essentially what we walk into every time we go into the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, especially amplified here during Holy Week. So talk about the way of the cross mm -hmm. in in this mission. Okay. In a very simple context, the way of the cross is, is a shedding of anything or the removal of anything that prevents you from uh, seeking either grace, mercy, or loving someone. And so the way of cross for Catholics universally, and what the church proposes is that our Lord took up the mantle of all the burdens of sin, of humanity, all the uh, frustrations, the anger, all the resentment, and took it upon himself to make sure that that never becomes your king again, that that will never in any way uh, prevent you from seeing God for who he is and preparing the way to heaven. So the way of the cross really is embracing that which is the gift of Christ, his grace, his mercy, what he did on the cross and dying for our sins, and waking up every morning knowing that sin has no hold on me anymore, that it is the grace and the love of Jesus Christ and his mercy, especially through the holy sacrifice of the Mass. And so that, in a simple way, is what the, the way of the cross indicates. It's my path, my intention to seek him, to love him more than sin itself. Well, you make an, uh, an important point here that it has to be my intention like we have to yeah. receive this it's mm -hmm. it's not like it's just gonna happen Correct. um we we do play i i don't want to get pelagian or anything but we do play a role in accepting the gift that god offers Oh, absolutely. I mean, and, and look at our body soul composite. If you look at it from that perspective, we possess a soul, we possess a body. They both have to work in tandem. There has to be an action that comes from our soul that's projected through our human uh, ability to say yes to, to God. And so th there is uh, basically, it's an equation. God's infinite love, do, our, do we respond to that love? His revelation, our response of faith. And so it, it, the Pelagianism set aside, but we have to do something. Uh, we have to either say yes or no. That That's part of the beauty of this way of the cross. Either we, we embrace it or we reject it. If we embrace it, heaven awaits. If we reject it, well, uh, there's something just less less joyful that awaits us. And, and that's part of the drama of the battle between good and evil. And that's really part of the way of the cross. You're always given a proposition. You choose. Yeah. Can you talk about God's love? in all of this, Marlon. I think Gosh. this is such an important thing that we need to remember, particularly in this time of year. I think we tend to forget that that God is this being that we cannot reach. And we, we, we tend to place God in a mantle that is basically far superior than our own. But he is God, of course, he's omnipotent. <clears throat> but he never stops being father to us. He is Abba, he is daddy. And what that means is that he perpetually will always give you the opportunity to seek him, to love him, and to embrace him. The, the old catech, Baltimore Catechism uh, aspect of know, love, and serve him. Uh, he was willing to offer his only begotten son. And that's the greatest proposition that any human being can receive. It's the fact that I love you so much, I will give you of my own blood to shed blood for you. That's love. That's love. Amen to that. Amen. There's a great post that Marlon has over at his site, knowing is doing. 
Org. I love this quote at the end from St. Rose of Lima. <laughs> Apart from the cross, there is no other ladder by which we may get to heaven. Isn't and that awesome? So awesome and so many different layers of, yeah. of meaning that you mm-hmm. can glean from that, particularly in light of the discussion that we've just been having this morning. We've been talking to Marlon De La Torre. You can find knowingisdoing.org linked at Sunrise Morning Show. Dot com. Marlon, thank you so much, and go Bucks. Thank you, Annie. Go Bucks, and have a blessed Holy Week. You as well, Marlon. Thank you so much. You can find all of our guests linked at sonrisemorningshow.com. Half past the hour now on the Sunrise Morning Show. It's time for news. The Supreme Court today will consider whether to reinstate earlier restrictions on access to a popular abortion pill. The Biden administration and the manufacturer of the drug Mifepristone are seeking to reverse a lower court ruling that reversed the relaxation of restrictions from the FDA, reducing the requirements for in-person doctor visits and even allowing women to receive them through the mail. An appeals court ruled the FDA failed to follow proper procedures when they loosened regulations on the use of Mifepristone. The high court's decision is expected by the end of June or possibly early July. The U.S. bishops have asked the faithful to pray through the end of June through the intercession of St. Joseph for the deliberations. Operators of the container ship that crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore say the onboard crew was not injured. Rory O'Neill reports. The container ship is called the Dolly. Flagged to Singapore, it collided with the bridge while leaving Baltimore on a voyage to Sri Lanka. Ship manager Synergy Marine Group said that the Dolly's crew and two pilots have been accounted for and they were not injured. The 1,200-foot container ship was built back in 2015. Video shows the ship may have lost power and navigation shortly before the impact. I'm Rory O'Neill. The Central Plains and Upper Midwest are getting pounded by strong winds and heavy snow. The National Weather Service said some areas could see up to a foot of snowfall by tomorrow evening. Central Nebraska, Eastern South Dakota, and Northern Minnesota are expected to see an inch to two inches of snowfall per hour. The NWS said the conditions could make travel nearly impossible at times. The storm will also likely cause power outages and tree damage. Pope Francis yesterday met with Nigerians who live in Rome, encouraging them to embrace unity and reject division. From Vatican Radio, Joseph Tullock reports. I thank you for everything you have done, witnessing to the joyous message of the gospel. That's how Pope Francis started his address to Rome's Nigerian community earlier today as he met with them in the Vatican's Paul VI Hall. The Pope expressed his gratitude for the numerous vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life emerging from Nigeria. Pope Francis then turned to the subject of Nigeria's ethnic and cultural diversity. La diversità di etnie, tradizioni, culturali e lingue nella vostra nazione non costituisce un problema. The diversity of ethnicities, cultural traditions and languages in your nation is not a problem but rather a gift that enriches the fabric of the church as well as that of the entire society. The Pope expressed his hope that the Nigerian community in Rome might always resemble a great and inclusive family in which all can use their different gifts and talents which are fruits of the Holy Spirit. In this way, he said... It will be possible to sow the seeds of social friendship for present and future generations. In this regard, however, the Pope warned of a danger. The danger is one of closure, of not being universal, but rather closing oneself off in isolation, that is, I allow myself to use the word tribal. Community, yes. Tribe, no. And this is very important. It applies to all of us, everyone, according to their particular position. What we need is universality, not closing oneself off within one's own culture. It's true, one's own culture is a gift, but not one to be closed off. 
but rather to be given, to be offered. I'm Joseph Tullock. The Biden administration is defending its decision to allow the U.N. Security Council to pass a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said the U.S. abstained from the vote because the resolution does not condemn Hamas. The resolution, unlike others in the past, does tie a temporary ceasefire to the release of hostages held by Hamas. That's the news. You're listening to the Sunrise Morning Show. It's 35 minutes past the hour. Sacred Heart Radio is brought to you by you. Yes, your donations make Catholic Radio possible. So to give a gift of any amount, please visit sacredheartradio.com and click donate or call 513-731-7740. And thank you. This is Chris Knockelman, owner of Schneller Knockelman Plumbing, Heating, and Air. Our family has been a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio for more than a decade, and we encourage other businesses to do the same. Find us at skpha.com, skpha.com. Hi, I'm Anna Mitchell, MC for Heartbeats for Life 5K, sponsored by Cincinnati Right to Life, Saturday, April 20th at Lunkin Airport Playfield. It's a day of food, family, and fun to keep hearts beating in Ohio. Register at cincinnatirighttolife.org. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Sunset Janitorial Supply, a Catholic family business supplying the tri-state cleaning industry with commercial cleaning supplies, personal hygiene, equipment, and even machine repair. Free delivery to your business. More information at sunsetjanitorialsupply.com. It's 24 minutes before the hour on this Monday of Holy Week, March the 25th. Your forecast is brought to you on Sacred Heart Catholic Radio by Schneller Knockelman Plumbing, Heating, and Air online at skpha.com. Getting warmer today. Right now, it's not bad with temperatures in the lower to mid 40s as you're heading out the door. For Cincinnati, mostly cloudy and breezy today with a high of 67 degrees. Showers likely tonight. Some isolated storms possible in an overnight low of 47. Showers and storms likely tomorrow could be stronger in the afternoon with a high of 63. For the Miami Valley Dayton area, partly sunny and breezy today with a high around 67, becoming cloudy with rain developing after midnight and an overnight low tonight of 46. Widespread morning rain and thunderstorms in the afternoon tomorrow with a high of 64 degrees. This is Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. The Sunrise Morning Show continues on this Fig Tuesday. That ought to answer the question of what to have for breakfast this morning. Hope your uh, search through the pantry bears more fruit than that fig tree did. Andrew Petterpin joins us now. He's founder and editor-in-chief of the Space Salvi Institute, host of the Ignatius Press podcast, co-author of Popcorn with the Pope. Andrew, good morning. Good morning, Matt. So there are a lot of ways that we could probably uh, just channel surf or just go through streaming stuff and, and zone out this week. But Holy Week really is an opportunity to to be very intentional, uh, intentional about our media choices that help us really enter in. Now, uh, I know you've got some Holy Week viewing ideas, and uh, most of these are probably going to be biblically themed. Are all of them biblically themed uh, in terms of your Holy Week viewing? Not entirely, but mostly, yes. Okay, so what's outside the biblically themed, and then we'll get into the Bible ones. Well, it's still somewhat biblically themed, I guess we could say, Matt, but I chose a a movie that I really love from 2019 called A Hidden Life, directed by Terrence Malick. Yeah, we're going to call that biblically themed. Okay. Well, (laughs) it's, it's... you know, I'm not calling it biblically themed myself because it's not, you know, set back in Bible times, and it's not about, you know, um, you know, directly related to, to biblical themes. But, but of course, it is because it's about a man, a martyr, uh, blessed Franz Jägerstetter, who um, would not go along with the Nazis, and he he lived out his faith very, very simply, but very profoundly, and um, and went to his death um, at the hands of the Nazis because he wouldn't take the oath to Hitler, and really just desired to follow the real Christ, not the, the made-up Christ that uh, his townspeople and his friends said, uh, you know, that he could just kind of go along with things. So very, very beautiful, profound movie. I highly recommend it. It's hard to believe that was 2019 uh, yeah. when that came out, that that's been out for five years now. And again, not not a, uh, you know, 
an outspoken Catholic director of that film either, but someone who certainly cares about these themes of, of sacrifice and redemption, which, of course, is at mm-hmm. the heart of Holy Week. Uh, what else you got on the list? Okay, well, I've got a really super biblical one for you, Matt, and that's Jesus of Nazareth. I was wondering. Uh, I was wondering. Yeah, it's got to be on the list for Holy Week. It's, it's one, you know, like you, Matt, I grew up in a Protestant family, and, uh, and we loved Jesus of Nazareth in our home. We, watched, we had a VHS copy taped off TV, and uh, we watched it every year around this time. And uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It came out in 1977, directed by Franco Zeffirelli. It's really a mini series that aired on TV, but it's it's very cinematic and um, very beautiful. It's uh, it's got an interesting story for Catholics too, because the director Franco Zeffirelli knew Pope Paul VI a little bit, and Pope Paul VI actually asked him to make a movie about the life of Jesus, and the product uh, in 1977 was Jesus of Nazareth. So, um, you know, he he it's it's his own movie, Zeffirelli's own movie, and he made it very ecumenically, and it's not you know overtly Catholic, but there's nothing in it that uh, is problematic really for Catholics. And um, it's really just a, just a very, a very beautiful movie. Well acted. Robert Powell plays Jesus. Olivia Hussey plays Mary. Uh, Michael York plays John the Baptist. It's uh, it's well worth the, the time it takes to watch. Absolutely. Uh, Zeffirelli, by the way, only died in 2019 also. Um, mm-hmm. which again, I, I feel like time is just a complete illusion since COVID. <laughs> so it's hard yeah. for me to wrap my mind around uh, the the timeline of these things. I'll, I'll give you one that we watch as a family every year, and that is mm-hmm. the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. I know it's like the ultimate old school, uh, big box Hollywood epic, but I'm telling you, every year I think, well, you know, I'll watch a little bit of this, and then we start yeah. it, and I just get immediately sucked in. Yul Brenner is just like extraordinarily compelling as Pharaoh, you know, Charlton Heston's pretty good too, but like, it's just so massively done. And you, you know, in this world where we're so like into CGI and people are making AI, bad AI religious art nonstop. And you go back and you watch something like the 10 commandments and you just think, how did they do that? Like, how Mm -hmm. did they pull this off? Like every year I'm stunned by, uh, by the 10 commandments. Yeah, I, that's one of my favorites, too. And let me give you another one that's comparable, and that's Ben-Hur. Yeah. I don't know if that's one that's on your list, but that's from 1959, William Wyler, also starring Charlton Heston. Just a, just a tremendous movie based on a novel, and, uh, you know, it's, it's historical fiction, so, you know, it's, um, but, it, but it, uh, it puts us right into the, the context of, of the life of Christ, but seen through the eyes of this, of this other family, and particularly this man, Judah Ben-Hur, who is helped by Jesus in a, a difficult moment? Uh, Jesus gives him water, and then later on in his life, he's actually able to help Jesus carry his cross. And um, so amazing stuff happens in his family. And it, anyway, huge like old school Hollywood spectacle movie, but very very um, edifying for us and encouraging for us in our faith. Chariot races the whole nine yards. So, oh you know, yeah. And with, yep. and with both of these, uh, you know, with the Ten Commandments and with Ben Hur, uh, you don't really you have to you have to think a little bit about the connection to Holy Week because Ben Hur, it doesn't come until like the end. <laughs> right? right. Uh, and right. with the 10 commandments, um, unless you've been to the Easter vigil and realize that like, this is one of the main events that like is foreshadowing the baptism that the new people are going to receive at the end of the Easter vigil. Like, it, you know, you, you don't understand how like this whole Exodus is a metaphor for the entire Christian life and conversion. So yeah, there's there's a lot in that. Um, any last recommendations before you go? Yeah, one more, Matt. Um, I, a beautiful little movie from 1950 is called The Flowers of St. Francis. It's directed yeah, by Roberto that Rossellini. Movie. Yes. It's, it's so much fun. It's, it's, it's a series of vignettes, so it's not an overwhelming experience of movie watching. You know, it's like just kind of easy to watch. And the kids can watch it, and it's got some really just delightful and sweet things in it, and you know just a wonderful uh, tribute to the life of one of our great saints, uh, Saint Francis. So very edifying, very very helpful for Holy Week. And plus, uh, you might think my kids are not going to be into this black and white movie, but Brother Ginepro is oh, uh, yes. he's a kick, man. He is a kick in that movie. So. Yeah, there's a scene. There's one scene where he, you know, he goes on quite an adventure and meets up with these kind of ruffians and. Uh, you know, it's it's almost like a cartoon watching watching that particular scene, and you know, I think kids will just laugh out loud watching it. It's it's delightful. 
It really is delightful. Where, well, Andrew Pettiprin, if people want to find uh, the Ignatius podcast or maybe your book Popcorn with the Pope, where you uh, do a breakdown of the Vatican film list, how do they do so? Well, um, I'm very active on X, formerly called Twitter, so they can follow me there at Andrew Pettiprin, and uh, they can find me through my website, andrewpettiprin.com as well. Linked at sunrisemorningshow.com in the show notes. Andrew, have a wonderful Holy Week. Thanks for your time this morning. Thanks. You too, Matt. God bless. Anna Mitchell, before we get the, the break, anything that you particularly recommend? Oh, I am definitely a Jesus of Nazareth person. Yeah. Are you guys miracle maker people? Um, We have, you know, I haven't really um, dove into, I haven't seen it before. That Is that, that's you the like that claymation one. one, right? Well, it's more like, uh, it's like marionettes. There's some stop motion and that's stuff. It. In it. That's it's, it. That's it. Stop it's, motion. It's a, it's that's a whole bunch I meant. of different things. Not it's claymation. got Ralph Fiennes in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You need to, but I love Stephen Gray Donis. Love, love, I'm not going to let. I'm not going to tell him you haven't seen it because he'll be shocked. Oh, well, he'll be. You know, there's a lot of stuff I haven't seen. Yeah. Well, what Miracle Maker is worth the time. It's worth the time. Cool. Very We're back cool. after this. It's a quarter till. Are you looking for peace? Longing for joy? Want to meet the Giver of all goodness? God is calling the laity to bring Ignatian prayer into a suffering world. Work for the new evangelization. Go to LordTeachMeToPray.com. Order your free digital training and manual. Find true happiness and everlasting joy. Go to LordTeachMeToPray.com. And click on the red button today. It's free. Approved by the USCCB. Central Fabricators is proud to support the Sunrise Morning Show, where you'll get news from the Catholic perspective, while keeping you up to date on what's happening in the Vatican as well. It's also a great way to keep in touch with the Catholic faith throughout the week. Central Fabricators, based in Cincinnati, Ohio, is a family-owned business for over 75 years, manufacturing and repairing corrosion-resistant storage tanks, reactors, and pressure vessels. On the web at centralfabricators.com. That's centralfabricators.com. Did you give up coffee or caffeine for Lent? Be sure to check out the tea and decaf offerings from the Mystic Monks of Wyoming. Find a link to Mystic Monk Coffee at sunrisemorningshow.com. When you make a purchase after clicking our link, we earn a commission to help support the show. The monks also have their seasonal favorite Pasca Java available for you to buy now in anticipation of your Easter Sunday feast. And why not add a Sunrise Morning Show mug to include in the Easter basket? Find those mugs and a Mystic Monk Coffee link at sonrisemorningshow.com. EWTN Radio is seeking a dynamic radio producer to join the EWTN Radio team in Irondale, Alabama. The right candidate will be a passionate, multi-skilled, talented professional who can manage and direct all aspects of producing world-class programming and play an integral part in Mother Angelica's mission. If this is you or someone you know, email a resume and cover letter, including salary requirements, to humanresources at EWTN.com. 13 till. Here's Anna with headlines. The U.S. bishops are asking the faithful to pray as the U.S. Supreme Court today will hear oral arguments on reinstating restrictions to Mifepristone. Operators of the container ship that crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore say the onboard crew was not injured and pope francis has written a message to young people to mark the fifth anniversary of his apostolic exhortation christus vivit more to come at the top of the hour we got news at the top and bottom of each hour every weekday morning here on the sunrise morning show thank you for joining us on this fig tuesday tuesday of holy week march the 26th the Sunrise Morning Show continues. I'm Matt Swaim. It's always great to catch up with Monsignor Charles Pope. He is a priest of the Archdiocese of Washington. He's just up the road from me. That's uh, the Archdiocese I live in as well. Monsignor Pope, how are you? I know you. I'm doing well. We get to talk about leprosy today, an exciting and uh, <laughs> and fun, fun topic. Uh, but, you know, not really, but sort of. It's It's interesting because... You know, we look around in our world today, and uh, leprosy has pretty much been taken care of. So yeah. it's hard for us to sort of wrap our mind around the stigma here. Uh, but talk a little bit about how leprosy <laughs> is not just a medical reality in the scriptures, but also kind of a metaphor uh, in a lot of ways. Yeah, you know, one of the <clears throat> Psalms, well, a number of the Psalms, but I guess the, of all the Psalms, Psalm 38 kind of 
deals with it most, and it's basically using leprosy as an image for sin. And and so uh, if, here's some verses from you know Psalm 38. It says, "There's no soundness in my flesh because of the of your indignation. No health in my bones. My iniquities have covered my head. They weigh on me like a burden too heavy. My wounds grow, grow foul and fester because of my foolishness, and I'm utterly bowed down and prostrate." There's no sound as anywhere in my flesh. My companions stand far off uh, from me. So again, that, of course, as you know, leprosy would cause a person to have to be excluded from the community and live on the edge of town and cry out, le- le- you know, uh, unclean, unclean, when somebody would come near, you know, and uh, quite, quite, a, quite an awful, <laughs> quite an awful thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's an awful thing, but it, well... I'll, I'll just say this. I mean, you got a great article on this uh, in your uh, blog, which we've got linked at, at sunrisemorningshow.com, uh, where we talk about losing leprosy in four easy steps. But I was uh, teaching our uh, our OCIA, RCIA, whatever they call it, our uh, our Catholic Training Wheels Society uh, <laughs> the other day on confession, and we were looking at the effects of confession, right? And there are a few of them. Uh, one of them, it, it, it heals you, right? It uh, mm-hmm. Restores your relationship with God, but it also restores your relationship with the church, and that actually yes. also happens every time Jesus heals a leper. Right? Not only are they healed, mm-hmm. um, they have a relationship with God that is renewed and restored through their direct contact with Christ. And turns out they're also plugged back into their communities. Yeah, you know the, the analogy is very interesting with confession because, yeah, the, it, when when a person had leprosy, uh, they were excluded by the community. Now. How was that done? Well, it was the priest uh, in, in the Old Testament. There's whole chapters in the book of Leviticus and also in other places that describe how priests is to determine whether leprosy is really the case or this is just something, other skin infection or psoriasis or something lesser. And he was, it was very carefully done. But sadly, if, if a priest had to say, look, they've got the leprosy, um, they, um, uh, you know, they have to be excluded. But then let's say it starts to heal up. And they would, again, as Jesus says to the leper, go show yourself to the priest. Um, and so the priest would say, oh, the, the leprosy is, uh, has, been, has been healed, um, and you can be readmitted to the community. Well, isn't this in effect, you know, when we go to confession, um, the priest represents not just God, but also the community. And um, sometimes because of mortal sin, we, we become, you know, uh, distant from the community and um, – it's, it's up to the priest to sort of, you know, through that absolution of Jesus to readmit us. Uh, in rare cases, you know, when a person has been received some kind of excommunication, you know, the priest or in some cases the bishop uh, has to remit that. But it's, it's that exclusion, yeah, from the community. And at the heart of it, if you look at the leper who seeks healing from Jesus, it, it's the relationship that heals. You know, he, he seeks a relationship, but it says Jesus looks upon him with pity. And the word pity in English kind of comes off negatively, but really pity is, is from the Latin pietas, meaning family love. So we see them as a brother. Not like, oh my gosh, you're a filthy outcast. Go away. You can cause me sick. Go away. He says, no, he touches him. Uh, he sees him as a brother. Uh, and, uh, and so it's that, it's that relationship with the Lord that heals. And then, of course, he, that, that relationship with the Lord restores us to the community. So in effect, you know, all of these are analogies for confession that that uh, the Lord wants to restore us to the relationship of, uh, uh, you know, of his with, with his body, the church. And uh, that's the job of the priest. You know, it's interesting. And you get into this a little bit when you talk about, uh, you know, step three and your four steps <laughs> uh, <laughs> to lose leprosy. You know, Jesus heals the guy. Right. He is <laughs> already healed. And yet he still has to go you know, go through this act that sort of like yeah. is a confirmation of what has happened. Uh, and, yeah. you know, same thing happens if I go to confession. Uh, when I receive those words of absolution, I'm forgiven. But I still got to yeah. go do something, right? I still have to, you know, even if it's something uh-huh. as simple as, I mean, I remember the first time I got a penance on my first confession. It was Holy Week 2005, and I spilled a lifetime of sins at my age of 25 to the priest in that confessional, in my first confession. And he said, mm-hmm. all right, go say two Hail Marys. I'm like, wait, did you not listen to anything I just said? <laughs> How am I getting off like this? But we have to do that thing. Like, 
Yeah. Why yeah. do we have to do that thing if we've already been healed? Much like, the, why did the leper have to do that thing and go show yeah. himself to the priest if he'd already been healed? Yeah, well, again, and, and very often, you know, penances, because we don't earn uh, forgiveness, but they are somewhat perfunctory sounding, but they're an important way where the, where the sinner admits, I need to now make some steps to return to the community. That, you know, for example, if I ask you to take three steps to the right, you defiantly say, no, I'm going to take three steps to the left. Well, now you're six steps out of place where you need to be. Um, say, well, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? Yes, yes, but, you know, we, I needed you over there for a reason, let's just say. <laughs> so now you say, you're forgiven, but there's, there's a need to start to repair the damage and get to where you need to be, you know, and that's, that's making the journey, that's walking um, with the Church. That's part of what penance is about. It's, it's maybe somewhat symbolic. Uh, it doesn't earn us absolution, and even if you forget to do your penance, you're still absolved. But the point is that we are in, we engaged by the Lord to be part of our own healing and uh, to start making some steps back, you know, to toward the community that we have both harmed and also left in some sense or gotten out of step with by yeah. our sin. We're not mere passive recipi- recipients of salvation, right? We're part- right. participation is is part yeah. of this. We're participants yes. in our own redemption. It's like, uh, you know, if I, I mean, if I'm pushing the, the pedal on something in a car, the car's doing yeah. all the work of going down the road, but I at least had to put my foot down <laughs> before anything yes, happens. Right. So, uh, good stuff. We've got your article on leprosy in the spiritual life, Monsignor Charles mm-hmm. Pope. It's linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, as always. You too. Thank you. And you can find not only Monsignor Charles Pope, but you can find all the people we talk to. You can get involved in the chat uh, in our Facebook live stream and our YouTube video stream. If you're there, subscribe, and uh, you can even get notified in the morning when the videos go live. So hey, Matt. Hang out with me and Annie. Yes. Did you really only get two Hail Marys for your first penance? It might have been three. Three? I don't recall. I was so emotionally, like, just, like, devastated by the experience. <laughs> I I basically Googled how to go to confession because I, don't I hadn't really been well trained. Uh, it funny. was not part of my RCI I honestly I was up. so but I knew I needed to go. And I went in there, I'm like, I'll just do this. I've confessed my sins all the time. I used to go to altar calls all the time as an evangelical. I was not ready. You were not prepared. I was not ready for how different the sacrament of reconciliation is. That's awesome. And That's awesome. it has become a favorite part of my being Catholic. Go if you haven't gone. Yeah. This is a good week to do it, folks. Indeed. We're back after the break. It's three minutes till. I'm Father Rob Jack. Join me this afternoon for Driving Home to Faith when Steve Ray will talk about the holy places of Easter in the city of Jerusalem. Alan Migliorato will share his adventure Catholic parenting tip this week. I'll reflect on the second suffering servant song of Isaiah, plus frequent traffic and weather. That's this afternoon beginning at 4 on Sacred Heart Radio. You're on the road to Christ the King. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Molly Maid of Westchester. Insured, screened, and drug-free employees deliver service with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. 1-800-MOLLY-MAID or at mollymaid.com. Molly Maid, a clean you can trust. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Fred Espenchide Plumbing. For plumbing and remodeling, Fred brings 55 years of experience to his work. Licensed in Ohio and Kentucky. Fred Espenchide, your pro-life plumber. 859-441-0950. 859-441-0950. Support for the Sunrise Morning Show is from Visiting Angels. Visiting Angels provides experienced, compassionate care to millions of aging adults nationwide by keeping them safe and healthy in the comfort of their own home. Whether it's a short break for caregivers or for long-term assistance, Visiting Angels provides hygiene, meals, light housework, companionship, and more. And services are available up to 24 hours per day. Visiting Angels, online at visitingangels.com. That's visitingangels.com. Franchise opportunities available. All are precious in God's sight, no matter our age, race, ability, or residence. Yet many lives are threatened, especially in the womb. Cincinnati Right to Life works to protect the good gift of life at every age and every stage. For more information, go to CincinnatiRightToLife.org. Hi, I'm Jim Akers, board member with the Cincinnati Chapter of Legatus. Catholic business leaders and their spouses meeting the challenge of balancing faith, family, and business. 
We meet once a month for Mass and dinner, along with a local or national speaker and a wonderful venue throughout the city. Many of our speakers you have heard right here on Sacred Heart Radio. Please think about joining our group of Catholic leaders and become an ambassador for Christ in your business or profession. Contact us at Cincinnati at Legatus.org. That's Cincinnati at Legatus.org. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Twin Dental of Cincinnati. Since 1986, twin brothers, Drs. David and Michael Rothen, have been providing superior dental care in a relaxed and comfortable setting for the entire family. The twin dental doctors utilize advanced dentistry techniques from sedation to implants and the latest in cosmetic options to preserve and beautify smiles. Twin Dental, located just off the I-275 exit at Hamilton Avenue. For a complimentary evaluation, 513-825-6111 and online at twindental.com. I'm Deacon Bill Mullaney from Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish. Thank you for listening to Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. 740 WNOP Newport, 910 WPFB Middletown, or get the app, stream, podcast, and more at sacredheartradio.com. Arise, it's a new day. Hear his word. It is Tuesday of Holy Week, Fig Tuesday. On this March 26th, let's begin in prayer in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Have mercy on your people, Lord. For those who have denounced family members, friends, or political opponents to regimes that imprison or murder the denounced, we pray they may repent and find forgiveness. We pray for those who have turned against relatives, friends, or neighbors in ways that have caused bewilderment and pain that they may turn again toward those they have hurt. We pray for those who have abused the confidence of others in ways that have brought about loss and mistrust. We pray that they may seek and accept reconciliation. O God, our Father, ever faithful toward us who are so often faithless, cleanse, heal, and restore us through the death and resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. It is a better way to start a Tuesday, Fig Tuesday. Jesus cursed the fig tree on this day in Holy Week, so that's why the day gets the nickname. So if you're looking for a breakfast option, there it is. I'm Matt Swaim. Anna Mitchell has news. Paul Lachman at the controls. You can join the Facebook live stream chat and the YouTube stream chat through the show notes, which Travis has up and running at sunrisemorningshow.com. Up this hour, Father Frank Donio will talk about St. Vincent Pilati and what he has to say about suffering, a great theme for Holy Week. Dr. Benjamin Lewis uh, has a translation of a Laud's hymn that is for morning prayer and the Divine Office for Holy Week. Uh, you may have it in your Divine Office hymnal, but only in Latin. And he's got the translation of it, and oh my goodness, it is a powerful one. So looking forward to sharing that with you here in a little bit. Steve Ray is going to be along, Chris McGregor. Uh, with more from the Office of Readings, we've just got a jam-packed hour ahead as we continue through the holiest week on the calendar. Right now, it is two minutes past. News of service of Central Fabricators and centralfabricators.com. Here's Anna Mitchell. Good morning. The U.S. Supreme Court today will hear oral arguments that the U.S. bishops say could have major implications for accessibility of the abortion pill. The Biden administration and manufacturer of the drug Mifepristone are seeking to reverse a lower court ruling that reversed the relaxation of restrictions, reducing the requirements for in-person doctor visits and even allowing reception of the abortion pill through the mail. An appeals court had ruled the FDA failed to follow proper procedures when it loosened the regulations on the use of Mifepristone. The bishops have encouraged the faithful to pray through June when the court's decision is expected. They say, quote, while the Supreme Court is not about ending chemical abortion, it can restore limitations that the FDA has overridden, end quote. They're encouraging prayer through the intercession of St. Joseph. Meanwhile, the Biden administration is defending its decision to allow the U.N. Security Council to pass a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. National Security Council said the U.S. abstained from the vote because the resolution did not condemn Hamas. 
resolution, unlike others in the past, does tie a temporary ceasefire to the release of hostages being held by Hamas. Baltimore Mayor Brandon Scott and other state leaders are reacting to a major disaster at the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. The bridge that carries I-695 traffic over the river collapsed due to a ship striking it overnight, sending multiple vehicles into the water. First responders, fireboats, and emergency personnel are at the scene. Maryland Governor Wes Moore has declared a state of emergency. Polls are showing the November rematch between President Biden and former President Trump is staying close. Mark Mayfield has more. The survey shared with The Hill from a Harvard Caps Harris poll shows Trump leads by two points over Biden with around 9 percent undecided. The elite is down from a six point lead in February. I'm Mark Mayfield. The central plains in upper Midwest are getting pounded by strong winds and heavy snow today. The National Weather Service said some areas could see up to a foot of snowfall by tomorrow evening. Central Nebraska, eastern South Dakota and northern Minnesota are expected to see an inch to two inches of snowfall per hour. The the NWS said the conditions could make travel nearly impossible at times. Pope Francis has written a message to young people to mark the fifth anniversary of his apostolic exhortation, Christus Vivit. From Vatican Radio, Devin Watkins reports. Recalling his apostolic exhortation written after the 2018 Synod on Young People, the Pope noted again that Christ is alive and he wants you to be alive. He said his message seeks to inspire young people to renew their hope, despite the many difficulties and challenges presented by our world filled with conflict and suffering. The Pope invited them to walk with Christ as a friend, welcome him into your life, and let him share all the joys and hopes, the problems and struggles of this time in your life. He went on to remind young people of the great mission they have received to bear witness before everyone to the joy born of friendship with Christ. The Pope also pointed to his invitation for young people to make a mess or hagan lío in Spanish in their efforts to evangelize and live the Christian life. Living in the presence of Jesus, the Pope said, will allow their memory of the past to prove fruitful and help them find courage in the present and face the future with hope. The exhortation Christus Vivi, Pope Francis added, is the fruit of a church that wants to move forward together by listening and in dialogue. He said the result of the 2018 Synod on Youth eventually prepared the way for the current Synod on Synodality. Now at this new stage in our ecclesial journey, the Pope said, we need more than ever to draw upon your creativity in order to explore new paths, always in fidelity to our roots. Reminding young people that they are the living hope of the Church on the Move, Pope Francis thanked them for their presence in and contribution to the life of the Church. He concluded his message by encouraging young people to embrace their own particular way of living and proclaiming the joy of the risen Christ. I'm Devin Watkins. And the FAA is warning of potential delays for commercial flights during the total solar eclipse. The rare astronomical event will happen April 8th with the path of totality across a dozen states. Passengers can expect delays between April 7th and April 10th as people flock to the best areas to witness the eclipse. I do not have far to go to get there, Matt. No. I don't Uh, have to take a flight. uh, So, I mean, is the totality coming through, like, Ohio? Yeah, yeah. In fact, um, I believe the path of totality will hit Hamilton, which is just, like, a 20-minute drive from where I am. Wow. Well, from where I sit right now, it's probably more like a half an hour drive. I thought I was going to have to go to Dayton, which is 45 minutes, but apparently Hamilton is in the path of totality. Interesting. I know. Fascinating. I'm super pumped. The kids are off school. They get an extra day of spring break because it's going to be at like three-ish on April 8th. And wow. that's right when the kids get out of school. Yeah, that's, that's timing-wise. That's, yeah. uh, that works out pretty nice. So they decided to just take the whole day off because we're so close to the path of totality. I'm yeah. very excited. I saw the last one where I had to drive like three, three and a half hours. And I was shocked, shocked at how amazed I was by this. You were shocked at how amazed you were? It was beautiful. You sure you weren't amazed at how shocked you were? Yeah, I guess I could say that. 
little bit of both, really. A little bit of both. Today is Tuesday, March the 26th, Tuesday of Holy Week, a.k.a. Fig Tuesday. So on the timeline of Jesus's final week before his death and resurrection, he cursed the fig tree. Read about it in scripture. It's nine past. Back with us now on the Sunrise Morning Show is Father Frank Donio from the Catholic Apostolate Center. Good morning, Father Frank. Good morning, Anna. So we are continuing our mini retreat with St. Vincent Pallotti in this season of Lent. Why don't you share the quote that you have for us today? Remember, God is found in suffering. That's quite a quote. Yeah. And it seems very very much what we would yes understand god is is found in these in these moments of suffering the number of times that i've encountered people over m- my years as a religious and and a priest who turn to god when they're suffering many times the reality is when when things are going great we don't necessarily turn to god yeah and we we encourage that we hope that that's the case but many many times when people very much turn to god is when there's some kind of suffering that's come into life or in the world or in what they see uh, concerns that they have but personal suffering in particular is one where people look for God, sometimes have a challenge in seeing God in that suffering. Mm -hmm. And yet St. Vincent Pallotti is saying, no, remember, God is found in suffering. Well, you know, it's so beautiful. It makes me think of the, well, the moment of the crucifixion and what's recounted in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, You see in, in that story, um, in this story of of the two thieves that are on either side of Jesus, what you just described, you have the one that did not find God amidst suffering and ignored God amidst suffering, and then you had the one who found God while yes. he was suffering. Yes, the 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 uh, the good thief of Dismas is the the traditional name that he's he's given, mm-hmm. uh, the, and his final act was stealing heaven. Yes, which is, you know, that's that's uh, uh, certainly not original to me, but it was just really a, a, a wonderful way of looking at that. That there, there's always hope before that last breath, and in that suffering, the number of times of of encountering people who who decades and decades had been away from faith, and as a result of significant suffering often physical illness, but sometimes relationships or financial situations or emotional issues, all of those kinds of things that that turn people, that can turn people to a greater awareness of God. Mm. And I think that as people of faith, and I'm, I'm making a big assumption of the people who are listening, mm. but I think that that would be the case if they're listening, that as people of faith, we have an opportunity to assist our brothers and sisters in doing exactly what St. Vincent Pallotti was doing. Remember, God is found in suffering. Mm-hmm. And it's not, it's not to say that we are not that we're just simply going to say that and go away. No. What we show then is, is that we're there, that that we can be the face of of our, our of our Lord in their lives and be present to them in their suffering and help them to realize that that the the crucified Christ is united with them yes. in that suffering. Yeah, you know, I'm reminded of something that Matt Swaim says a lot, Father. He says, mm-hmm. um, if you're suffering, if I'm if I'm kind, I will offer to pray for you. But if I'm smart, I ask you to pray for me because yes. God is close to the brokenhearted. Very much so. And God is, and and that 
think about the the people in the, that are named in the Beatitudes. Mm-hmm. And, you know, blessed are the the meek and the all. We we can we go down that list of the of the poor and the suffering and those who are in need. And Jesus is saying they're blessed, meaning I'm very much close to them. I'm I'm present to them. Because as I said, again, we, we get we get sometimes focused on, well, life is going great, and that's all me. Mm-hmm. That's not God working, you know, giving me the grace to be able to do these things, giving me the gifts, the charisms, the talents to be able to do these things. No, no, that's all me. And then the suffering comes in and say, help. <laughs> and we're almost like like a small child. Or they think that's all God. You know, that yes. God imposes the suffering. Yeah. Why are you doing this to me, yes, God? Yes, I'm, 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 being, I'm being cursed. And there, there, are, there is still that strain of understanding. And, and we don't, as Catholics, we don't believe that. No, we don't. Now, our own sinfulness does lead to things. You know, if we're not caring for our body, if we're not caring for... If we're 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 damaging relation, you know, our own sin does lead to things, does lead to suffering. But those are our our free choices that the Lord has has given us mm-hmm. that that opportunity. Yeah. Just finally, Father, um, I mean, I know you you head up the Catholic Apostolate Center now, but you've told us in in previous conversations that that you used to be uh, what like rector of the Saint Jude Shrine. Yeah, can past, you, uh, what was called pastoral director. Mm-hmm. Could, could you reflect on this quote of St. Vincent Pilati? Remember, God is found in suffering in light of all, your experience there. Yes, all through all through this interview, I, I've been thinking about that. Yeah. Because I, I'm, I'm really drawing, with what I was saying a little earlier, I, I'm drawing from that experience. You know, St. Jude may be the patron saint of hopeless cases, but the thing that we focused on was hope that is found in Christ. He sh- always shows the face of Christ. Mm-hmm. And oh, we won't get into all the whole story associated with that. But the reality is, is that the, that with the, the hope is coming from Christ. And in, in those moments, uh, I would find people who are having tremendous suffering, and yet they're hopeful. And, and I don't mean wishful thinking hopeful. They might have stage four cancer. They might have uh, disaster situations that are going on in their family, among their friends, whatever the situation is. And yet their faith is giving them the strength to be able to go forward and not be curled up in a ball in a corner. And that was, was tremendous to see. And what our effort was always there and continues to this day is to assist people in recognizing just what St. Vincent is saying, that God is, is with you. You are not alone. And the community of faith is with you. Christ is present to you. Beautifully put. Thank you so much, Father Frank Donio. You can find the Catholic Apostolate Center linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. 17 pass now on the Sunrise Morning Show. We're back with headlines right after this. For over 500 years, the church-honored spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola have formed many saints. This treasured way of personal prayer with God is now available to you for free. Order your free training manual at lordteachmetopray.com and bring Ignatian prayer to others. Lord Teach Me to Pray is approved by the USCCB. Order your free training manual at lordteachmetopray.com. That's lordteachmetopray.com. Lord Teach Me to Pray underwrites the Sunrise Morning Show. Central Fabricators is proud to support the Sunrise Morning Show, where you'll get news from the Catholic perspective while keeping you up to date on what's happening in the Vatican as well. It's also a great way to keep in touch with the Catholic faith throughout the week. Central Fabricators, based in Cincinnati, Ohio, is a family-owned business for over 75 years, manufacturing and repairing corrosion-resistant storage tanks, reactors, and pressure vessels. On the web at centralfabricators.com. That's centralfabricators.com. 
Have you subscribed to get the Sunrise Morning Show show notes? When you subscribe, the show notes arrive in your inbox weekday mornings with the list of featured guests, books, articles, and websites we'll discuss. And then you'll also get the podcast with markers to quickly find and hear an interview again or to see the Sunrise Morning Show on video. So to know when your favorite guests are on, go to sunrisemorningshow.com and click subscribe. The Fierce Athlete Podcast features female athletes being raw and real about the joys and struggles of life, both on and off the field, and how faith can both heal our wounds and reveal true beauty. You can hear Fierce Athlete as well as faith-filled podcasts from our friends and affiliates around the world, all in one place, all free at EWTN Podcast Central. Visit EWTN.com slash radio and click Podcast Central today. 19 minutes past the hour. Here's Anna with headlines. The U.S. Supreme Court today will hear oral arguments over the accessibility of mifepristone, which is used in a popular abortion pill. The operators of the container ship that crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore say the onboard crew was not injured and pope francis met yesterday with nigerians living in rome encouraging them to embrace unity and reject division got an appeal i want to put out there anna mitchell yeah on behalf of all the wonderful sacred artists who do incredible things and the great artistic patrimony of the church there's so many extraordinary images to share and to uh, pass around and to put on social media for Holy Week to help people remind themselves of the mysteries. Mm -hmm. Don't do AI-generated ones. If you can help it, please. I've seen so many really just like sort of fake AI-generated stuff. What if you don't know? Just go for the real good classic art. Support real artists, not robots, during Holy Week at least. You can find a lot of different businesses on Sacred Heart Radio's Angels List, but there are some businesses that we still don't have on the list. Right now is the perfect opportunity for you to reach hundreds of thousands of listeners and be the first business of your kind on our list. If you specialize in child care, appliance repair, pest control, painting, roofing, handyman services, or carpet cleaning, I want to talk to you. Email me, Leah, at sacredheartradio.com, and let's get you on Sacred Heart Radio's Angels List. I'm Bill Torbeck of Tri-State Abrasive and Tool Company, proud to support Sacred Heart Radio. We strive to provide the highest quality diamond and CBN products manufactured by privately owned companies, enabling us to provide prompt and personal service and you to avoid the unnecessary cost and frustrations of dealing with bureaucracies. Find us online at theabrasiveone.com. That's the number one, theabrasiveone.com, theabrasiveone.com. Support for the Sunrise Morning Show is from Visiting Angels. Visiting Angels provides experienced, compassionate care to millions of aging adults nationwide by keeping them safe and healthy in the comfort of their own home. Whether it's a short break for caregivers or for long-term assistance, Visiting Angels provides hygiene, meals, light housework, companionship, and more. And services are available up to 24 hours per day. Visiting Angels, online at visitingangels.com. That's visitingangels.com. Franchise opportunities available. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Twin Dental of Cincinnati. Since 1986, twin brothers, doctors David and Michael Rothen, have been providing superior dental care in a relaxed and comfortable setting for the entire family. The twin dental doctors utilize advanced dentistry techniques from sedation to implants and the latest in cosmetic options to preserve and beautify smiles. Twin Dental, located just off the I-275 exit at Hamilton Avenue. For a complimentary evaluation, 513-825-6111 and online at twindental.com. Sunrise Morning Show continues, and we always appreciate the insights of uh, Dr. Benjamin Lewis. He's Director of Translation Services for ISIL, the International Commission on English in the Liturgy. And sometimes we just take for granted these songs, these hymns, these prayers we pray in English. And uh, going back to the texts that they come from can be really, really enlightening. Dr. Lewis, good morning. Good morning, Matt. How are you? I'm doing well, and we get to talk about a hymn for Holy Week. Tell us about it. Yeah, so we we've had up through uh, 
the first part or uh, right up here till the end of Lent, we've had in the Liturgy of the Hours uh, the same hymns, um, either for Sundays or for weekdays, for, for Lent leading up to Holy Week. But now that we're in Holy Week, we get a new set of hymns. And there's one um, for morning prayer in uh, the Divine Office that is this, the hymn we sing for every day of Holy Week leading up to, um, to Easter. And it's, it's part of a hymn that you'll be familiar with from uh, the Good Friday Liturgy. It's a much longer hymn written by Venantius Fortunatus in around the year 600. So it's about 1,400 years it's old. It's an old hymn, more. A an really old hymn. old one. Really old hymn. And um, parts of it we sing um, in the Good Friday Liturgy, um, if you're familiar with the Crux Fidelis, the, um, Faithful Cross, the Saints Rely On. So this is actually a translation um, that we did. We did a translation of the hymn for the Missal in 2010-2011, um, so if parts of this sound familiar, it's because it's it's some of the same verses of the of the hymn that's that's in the Good Friday liturgy, but it's also sung for all of Holy Week uh, at morning prayer. Um, which if you cool. if you pray morning prayer now and you go to your your uh, liturgy of the hours volume, you'll you'll see that the hymn morning prayer hymn for Holy Week you have a couple of different actually three different options, two in English, uh, neither of which is a translation of this hymn. And then your third option for morning prayer is the Latin text of this hymn, untranslated. Which is not translated, right, yes. Which I'm going to guess most people don't opt for that third option. They probably either go with the Word of God proceeding forth or take up your cross, the Savior said, which are your two English options. Well, for so those who we... don't have this translated, yeah. then uh, help us out. Yeah, so here's the new translation um, that you can find in the Divine Office hymnal of this, of this Latin text. No disgrace was too abhorrent. Nailed and mocked and parched, he died. Blood and water, double warrant, issue from his wounded side. Washing in a mighty torrent, earth and stars and ocean tide. Faithful cross the saints rely on, noble tree beyond compare. Never was there such a scion. Never leaf or flower so rare. Sweet the timber, sweet the iron, sweet the burden that they bear. Lofty timber, smooth your roughness, flex your boughs for blossoming. Let your fibers lose their toughness, gently let your tendrils cling. Lay aside your native gruffness, Clasp the body of your king. Noblest tree of all created, richly jeweled and embossed. Post by lamb's blood consecrated, spar that saves the tempest tossed. Scaffold beam, which, elevated, carries what the world has cost. Wisdom, power, and adoration to the Blessed Trinity for redemption and salvation through the Paschal Mystery, now in every generation and for all eternity. Amen. Amen. Whew. Good grief. <laughs> you should have prepared me for that, but my goodness. First yeah, of I, all, I, I'm <laughs> glad you had to read that and not me. I couldn't have made it through. I, I, you might have noticed there were a couple of places I almost couldn't you, get. You through. almost, whew. yeah, it's such and that's a beautiful... been hidden. Like we just we haven't had that, and like where has we that been? Had the, we haven't had that in the in the Divine Office uh, in English translation yet. And it rhymes. And it rhymes, yeah. So it's a beautiful thing. It's interesting, and I don't know all the reasons that went into the decision. That sort of before my time at ISEL, but the Latin text doesn't rhyme. Uh, but the Latin text does have that same metrical pattern. Um, so we followed the, the meter of the Latin quite closely, um, but we introduced a rhyme which is not there in any uh, comprehensive way in the Latin. But it's just a beautiful reflection on this this great inversion of, you know, we Holy Week and, and Good Friday. We've taken this this instrument of torture, this sign of humiliation and... And sort of the lowest point of human life, and we've we've made it the the focal point of our hope and our 
than our our salvation and that it's not it's not us who did it you know god did that that yeah. he took this thing this this worst form of torture and he made it the very means for our salvation i do want to get a quick reflection from you on this because you and i as good Methodists grew up singing hymns like The Old Rugged Cross, right? Right. Uh, addressing it in the third person. But this hymn treats the cross like it's a character in the story. Yeah. Uh, what an interesting thing to think about as Catholics, as though the cross itself is like a character. Yeah, in that it's it's crux fidelis. It's a faithful cross. Faithful cross. That it's somehow, by by virtue of holding Christ up, it somehow, it somehow became... Uh, almost like it was a disciple of his. Somehow the, that this thing becomes transformed simply by being the instrument on which our Savior hung. Man, I'm telling you, I don't know what they're talking about other places on the dial during Holy Week, <laughs> but this is some. This is why I tune in <laughs> to, to Catholic Radio, especially this time of year. Dr. Benjamin Lewis, if our listeners want to connect with you and ISIL, how do they do so? Yeah, we're on the internet at icelweb.org, and you can purchase a copy of the Divine Office Hymnal. It's published by GIA Music. It's linked at sunrisemorningshow.com. Dr. Lewis, have a wonderful Holy Week. We'll talk to you on the other side. Thank you. You too, Matt. Half past the hour, here's Anna with news. The Good morning. The U.S. Supreme Court today will hear oral arguments that the U.S. bishops say could have moral imp- major implications for the accessibility of the abortion pill. The Biden administration and the manufacturer of the drug Mifepristone are seeking to reverse a lower court ruling that would could reverse the relaxation of restrictions, which reduce the requirements for in-person doctor visits and even receiving them through the mail. An appeals court ruled the FDA failed to follow proper procedures when it loosened regulations on the use of mifepristone. The U.S. bishops have encouraged the faithful to pray through June when the court's decision is expected, encouraging prayer particularly through the intercession of St. Joseph. Operators of the container ship that crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore say the onboard crew was not injured. Rory O'Neill reports. The container ship is called the Dolly. Flagged to Singapore, it collided with the bridge while leaving Baltimore on a voyage to Sri Lanka. Ship manager Synergy Marine Group said that the Dolly's crew and two pilots have been accounted for and they were not injured. The 1,200-foot container ship was built back in 2015. Video shows the ship may have lost power and navigation shortly before the impact. I'm Rory O'Neill. The Biden administration is defending its decision to allow the U.N. Security Council to pass a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby said... The U.S. abstained from the vote because the resolution did not condemn Hamas. The resolution, unlike others in the past, though, does not tie a temporary ceasefire to the release of hostages being held by Hamas. The central plains and upper Midwest are getting pounded by strong winds and heavy snow. The National Weather Service said some areas could see up to a foot of snowfall by tomorrow evening. Central Nebraska, eastern South Dakota, and northern Minnesota are expected to see an inch to two inches of snowfall per hour. Pope Francis yesterday met with Nigerians who live in Rome, encouraging them to embrace unity and reject division. From Vatican Radio, Joseph Tullock reports. I thank you for everything you have done, witnessing to the joyous message of the gospel. That's how Pope Francis started his address to Rome's Nigerian community earlier today as he met with them in the Vatican's Paul VI Hall. The Pope expressed his gratitude for the numerous vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life emerging from Nigeria. Pope Francis then turned to the subject of Nigeria's ethnic and cultural diversity. The diversity of ethnicities, cultural traditions and languages in your nation is not a problem but rather a gift that enriches the fabric of the church as well as that of the entire society. The Pope expressed his hope that the Nigerian community in Rome might always resemble a great and inclusive family in which all can use their different gifts and talents, which are fruits of the Holy Spirit. In this way, he said, it will be possible to sow the seeds of social friendship for present and future generations. 
In this regard, however, the Pope warned of a danger. Il pericolo della chiasura non è essere universale, ma chiudersi in un isolamento, mi permetto la parola, tribale. Le vostre radici si chiudono. The danger is one of closure, of not being universal, but rather closing oneself off in isolation, that is, I allow myself to use the word tribal. Community, yes. Tribe, no. E questo è molto importante di farlo, e questo vale per tutti. This is very important. It applies to all of us, everyone, according to their particular position. What we need is universality, not closing oneself off within one's own culture. È vero, la propria cultura è un dono, ma non per chiuderlo, per darlo. It's true, one's own culture is a gift, but not one to be closed off, but rather to be given, to be offered. I'm Joseph Tullock. New home sales dipped slightly in February as mortgage rates remain high. Figures from the Commerce Department show sales of new single-family homes slipped three-tenths of a percentage point below January's revised annual rate. The average price of a new home sold in February was $485,000. It's 35 past the hour. What we read and think about is what we become. Dominican sister Jane Dominic will talk about literature and life Friday, April 5th at Mount St. Mary Seminary. For more information, visit sacredheartradio.com slash events. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Schneller Knockelman Plumbing, Heating, and Air, treating customers with integrity for over 90 years for heating, air conditioning, water heaters, plumbing, and more. Schneller Knockelman at skpha.com skpha.com. Support for Sacred Art Radio is from Lefke Tree Experts. For residential or commercial tree pruning and removal, brush clearing, storm cleanup, and more, Lefke Tree Experts. 513-325-1783. 513-325-1783. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Sunset Janitorial Supply, a Catholic family business supplying the tri-state cleaning industry with commercial cleaning supplies, personal hygiene, equipment, and even machine repair. Free delivery to your business. More information at sunsetjanitorialsupply.com. It's 24 minutes before the hour on this Fig Tuesday, Tuesday of Holy Week, March the 26th. Your forecast is brought to you on Sacred Heart Catholic Radio by Schneller Knockelman Plumbing, Heating, and Air, online at skpha.com. Going to be stormy today. Right now it's wet with temperatures in the lower 50s as you're heading out the door. For Cincinnati, overcast with rain likely and stronger evening storms today, a high of 65 degrees. Partly cloudy tonight with an overnight low of 39, partly cloudy again tomorrow, and cooler, a high of 54. For the Miami Valley-Dayton area, morning rain with thunderstorms developing this afternoon, a high of 63. Showers and storms possible tonight, then clearing overnight and a low of 34. It'll be partly cloudy tomorrow with a high of 53 degrees. This is Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. Well, we thank you for joining us on this Fig Tuesday, March the 26th. The name of that day ought to give you an indication of what Jesus was doing on Tuesday of Holy Week, but uh, where was he in those days? Uh, We were very liturgically tuned in to the Triduum, but this whole first half of the week, there's a lot of stuff going on. Steve Ray now joining us from CatholicConvert.com to talk more about that journey towards the Passion. Steve, good morning. Good morning, Matt. Always good to be with you. So in these days, so we know exactly what Jesus was doing on Palm Sunday uh, because we heard about it in probably the longest Sunday morning Bible reading of the year in the Catholic Church. But what happened between that Palm Sunday uh, triumphal entry and uh, the events of the Triduum? Right, exactly. Well, he, uh, after Palm Sunday, he he knew that they were coming, I mean, before Palm Sunday, they knew he was coming to get them because they had said, we got to kill this one guy else. We're going to lose our whole place here in Jerusalem. So he, after Palm Sunday, then his home home base or his headquarters when he was in Jerusalem was at Mary, Martha, and Lazarus's house. When he was in the north in Galilee area, he stayed with Peter. That was his home base. 
But in the south, when he came to Jerusalem, he didn't stay in Jerusalem. It was two miles to the east that he would walk back and forth every day over the Mount of Olives. So he would be in Bethany, and he knew that this coming week was going to be the time when he was going to be uh, crucified. So those are his friends, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. Interestingly enough, he'd raised Lazarus from the dead, and the Jews were trying to kill Lazarus to get rid of the evidence. But so that's where he is in in Bethany, it's about a two-mile walk back to Jerusalem. And the Holy Week all starts in Jerusalem. He leaves Bethany. He walks past a, past a village called Bethphage, where he got the donkey the day, you know, the week earlier. He crosses over the Mount of Olives, down through the Kidron Valley, and you have to go right past the Garden of Gethsemane to do that. And then he would go right in the big gates, the golden gate there, and he would go all the way through the city of Jerusalem to Mount Zion, which was within the walls, and he would then have the the um, Passover meal in the upper room. So that's where we that's where he's taken us to this point. That's a lot going on, uh, and you've been to all those places multiple times. Uh, I, you know, what's interesting about the the uh, Garden of Gethsemane is, is the, they talk about how old those trees are and some of those things yep. that are still around. You know, perhaps even from the time of Christ. But that fig tree that was there on Fig Tuesday, obviously not there because it didn't make it through the week. <laughs> Yeah, that was a uh, it, it was a symbol of Jerusalem that it was supposed to have figs on it and it didn't, and it's just like Jerusalem and has all the show of the leaves and all the show of the the bushy green leaves and it looks great, but there was actually no fruit, and so this uh, cursing of the fig tree was a symbol of Jerusalem because you have all the bushy green leaves of being uh, righteous and so on, but there's no fruit there. You, it, you're deceiving people. It's all show. It's all lip service. So then he said, curse the tree, and it died. And that's basically what he—it was a prophecy against Jerusalem. And, of course, we know 40 years later, the Jews came in, and they took Jerusalem down, and the Jews were all scattered. Yeah, all remaining is the uh, the Western Wall. Uh, and, yeah, that's uh, right. You can, you can see it to this day. But, uh, you know, what strikes me every year— uh, is just how quickly the tide turns on Jesus from Palm yep. Sunday to to Good Friday to really his arrest on on Holy Thursday. I, I mean, are you able when you take pilgrims through to sort of show them uh, and, and help them enter into what it must have been like to hail Jesus on a Sunday and be ready to have him crucified just within a matter of days? Yeah, because we spend a lot of time in that area, and one of the things we do, it's called the Haas Promenade, and it's to the south of Jerusalem, and you can, from that promenade in the north, you can look down over the whole city. You can see the Mount of Olives and Bethany and Mount Zion and the whole city there and the valleys in between, and I tell the whole story of salvation history from Adam and Eve until today because you can see the whole thing right there in front of you, and we show where the whole passion took place. This is where he was. This is where he had the um, uh, the Passover meal, and then he went down this way, and then he came back, and you can see the whole thing in front of your eyes. And yes, and it's interesting because it's like mob rule. You can turn a mob if you get the right leader saying the right things in a very aggressive way. You can turn a mob around. And so here they are one moment hailing him as the king, just like Solomon came into Jerusalem riding his his father David's mule. This was a sign Jesus, now the son, a real son of David, is entering riding a donkey in the same way everybody knew what that meant, that he was becoming the new Solomon or the new son of David, the Messiah. And then they they turned on him, and the next thing you know is we have no king but Caesar, and he's been taken there. Now, being just real quickly, when I take our groups to Gethsemane, I always make the comment that this is where the real pain of the passion took place, in my estimation, because Jesus' crucifixion, in a way, was a merciful crucifixion, and that sounds horrible to say, but he was only on the cross for three hours, and there was records of keeping men alive on the cross for up to a 10 days. Can you imagine hanging on the cross for 10 days? And But the real pain, I think, took place in the Garden of Gethsemane because that's where the sins of the world fell on him. Father, forgive you. Know, take this away from me if you can, but not my will, but yours be done. It's the only time we have a record of him praying for himself. If if you will, please take this cup away. 
but but not my will, but yours be done. And in the midst of those trees, Matt, there's six of them there that have been there over 2,000 years. And you just say, when I tell our groups, those trees right there, if they had lips and a mouth, they would tell you what they mm. saw and heard 2,000 years ago because they were here. And then he they fall asleep on him. But that's where the real agony is. That's where the sin, that's where he who knew no sin became sin for us. The reason it was the most painful is because the holy, holy, holy one of God all of a sudden takes all the sins of the world into his body. He doesn't become a sinner. He becomes a sin bearer. And that sin took place offering. in Gethsemane. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm reading the intercessions from uh, Morning Prayer in the Magnificat this morning. I mean, these are the intercessions. <clears throat> For, for Tuesday of Holy Week, and they are, I, I can't help but think of what's going on in Jesus's heart and his mind and his will um, when I read these intercessions. They, they are, you know, for those who have denounced family members or friends or political opponents to regime this, that an imprisoner murder the denounced, we pray for their repentance, right? Or for those who have turned against yeah. relatives, friends, or neighbors in ways that cause bewilderment and pain, may they turn again towards those they have hurt. Uh, for those who have abused yep. the confidence of others in ways that have brought about loss and mistrust, all those things would have been felt by Jesus in that garden. Yep. All of those things were even he felt in his in his human nature the the alienation that sin caused and says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Of course, in within the Trinity there can be no forsaking, but in his human nature as he took the sins on the world, he felt the alienation of those sins. And all of those things you just mentioned, all of those things it took place. And and lastly I just want to say we'll finish this tomorrow. We'll go on tomorrow. Uh, from what I understand, I'll come on tomorrow and do more. But <clears throat> this how Jesus is represented as as a snake. It says as a serpent came, to, as a serpent was on a pole, so will the Son of Man be raised up. And that's because the serpent represents the sin, the death, everything of the devil. And Jesus took all of that to the cross in his body. So in a sense, he became the serpent. And he, this is really what happened up there on the cross. He put that all to death. He destroyed it all. And it's specifically in a garden. John chapter 18 says he went into a garden. Why? Because we're supposed to see the Garden of Eden. This is a reversal of what happened in the Garden of Eden. And we'll talk more about that tomorrow. Yes, indeed. Uh, he even fashioned a remedy out of death itself, that the cause of our downfall might be the means of our reconciliation. One of my favorite yep. lines from the Mass. Steve Ray from CatholicConvert.com. We've got you linked at SunriseMorningShow.com. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you. I'll be on with Father Rob today, too. All right. Father Rob Jack, driving home the faith for those of you who listen yep. on Sacred Heart Radio. It's 14 till. Chris McGregor joins us next. Central Fabricators is proud to support the Sunrise Morning Show, where you'll get news from the Catholic perspective, while keeping you up to date on what's happening in the Vatican as well. It's also a great way to keep in touch with the Catholic faith throughout the week. Central Fabricators, based in Cincinnati, Ohio, is a family-owned business for over 75 years, manufacturing and repairing corrosion-resistant storage tanks, reactors, and pressure vessels. On the web at centralfabricators.com. That's centralfabricators.com. For more than 150 years, the Comboni missionaries have traveled to nearly every corner of the world. Founded by St. Daniel Comboni, we are an international Catholic organization dedicated to ministering the world's poorest and most abandoned people. Your donations make a huge impact, and 95% are used to fund our many projects. Find out more at ComboniMissionaries.org. That is ComboniMissionaries.org. Giving up coffee for Lent? Look no further than the Mystic Monks for a great selection of their Mystica tea to get you through the season. And when you shop their site for tea or coffee, after clicking the Mystic Monk link at sunrisemorningshow.com, you earn us a commission. While you're at our site, check out our online store where you can purchase Sunrise Morning Show mugs and travel mugs. Find our mugs and link to Mystic Monk Coffee and Tea at sonrisemorningshow.com. That's sunrisemorningshow.com. This is Father Ed Sovia. Why do we need to go to confession? It's because confession is that opportunity for the forgiveness of sins. All of us have to deal with sin, but confession is an opportunity for us to come to the forgiveness of sins as we acknowledge our sins and ask for God's mercy and help. May we always be a people who recognize that confession brings us to the heart of our loving God. 
12 till. Here's Anna with headlines. The U.S. Supreme Court today will hear oral arguments in a case that could have major implications for the accessibility of the abortion pill. Operators of the container ship that crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore say the onboard crew was not injured when the bridge collapsed. And Pope Francis met yesterday with Nigerians living in Rome, encouraging them to embrace unity and reject division. You can hear news at the top and bottom of each hour right here on the Sunrise Morning Show. Happy to welcome back to the Sunrise Morning Show, Chris McGregor from DiscerningHearts.com. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Anna. How are you today? I am doing fine. Happy Holy Week to you. Oh, and blessed to everybody out there listening. Thank you. Yes. So this week's selection from the Office of Readings is for Tuesday of Holy Week, a.k.a. Fig Tuesday when Jesus cursed the fig tree. And uh, this coming from St. Basil the Great, a doctor of the church. And this is so interesting to me, Chris, this selection, um, which we have this first paragraph that kind of lays out the whole deal quite succinctly. He says, when mankind was estranged from him by disobedience, God our Savior made a plan for raising us from our fall and restoring us to friendship with himself. According to this plan, Christ came in the flesh. He showed us the gospel way of life. He suffered died on the cross, was buried, and rose from the dead. He did this so that we could be saved by imitation of him and recover our original status as sons of God by adoption. So, Chris, how do we imitate him? Well, we just have to—he gives us a really clear model. It's by the the holiness of Christ— the humility. He says to attain holiness, then we must not only pattern our lives on Christ, but by being gentle, humble, and patient. Yeah, We have to imitate him in his death. Well, how do and we do that? We have to be baptized. Yes. You know, a lot of times people think it, it's martyrdom that will do that. And that is a incredible calling and a grace that was provided for us. But what is more important than martyrdom? It's the martyrdom that occurs when we say yes to baptism. And because we have to fundamentally, we fundamentally change. We have to die to our old self. We have to suffer letting go of all the things that we cling on to that we think are the most important things. When in reality, the most important thing above the love of family, the love of neighbor, all those things, it's the love of God and to do the will of the Father and not our own. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, it, I think this becomes clearer to us when we think of full immersion baptism, um, baptism meaning like plunged, plunged into. And, mm-hmm. you know, when you think of, of, of baptism as being this this rebirth, and it is a rebirth, but to be born again— or shall I say, resurrected? We have to die first. Mm-hmm. We have to. Do we have to imitate Christ in His death by being buried with Him in baptism? He he goes on to talk about how we should, like Paul, be like Paul. Mm. Again, it wasn't so much that Paul he didn't. Uh, Saint Basil here isn't saying be like him by dying in a martyrdom. He's saying you have to die to like Paul by being baptized. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we, I don't know about you, Anna, but I don't know if we have, I I think we're really good as Catholics with an apologetic for the Eucharist. We can go back to John chapter six and talk about, you know, that, that the, all the implications of what the Eucharist is, and we can defend that. But I don't know if we do such a great job with baptism because it's the most important thing that we do. Mm. You know, you know how we're ontologically point. changed, yeah. and we have to say yes to that. We have to say yes to dying to that. You know, we we heard earlier about the importance of confession. It is tremendously, you know, uh, such a vital and important uh, sacrament that we have because we are we mess up. But for and then we want to go back and we want to say, I'm going to start over again. Heal me, Lord. I'm forgive me. I acknowledge my sins. 
But for St. Basil, when it comes to baptism, there was the presumption that when you say yes to baptism, that's it. Your life has to change. Yeah, You have to totally die to everything else that came before, and you have to put on the new Christ. Yeah, And that is what so many people are going to be doing this, this Saturday, adults that are going to be doing at Easter vigils around the world. They're going to be making that fundamental yes. And I hope we as a community are there to, prepare, you know, to help them and to prepare them because it's one of the, it is, it's the hardest thing that we're going to do. And because it, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, because I had said earlier that all those different loves and the things that we think are important, how we even do that is going to be fundamentally changed because now Christ comes to dwell in us. Mm -hmm. And so how we respond, what we thought was the best way, actually Christ is going to perfect that in us if we're open and allow him to do it in such a way that it will be the more. It will be better. But first we have to we have to die to that old self. Yeah, we really have to. I mean, it, it's so funny because I don't know that you what you talked about, how we're we're not really great at the apologetic end of of defending baptism and and the real effect that it has on our souls how it changes us um this indelible mark right mm -hmm. and you wonder if it's because we're not very good at living out our baptism in a way i mean it's like you know you see somebody and you have the water i mean particularly in in adults but like or in a child, you see them baptized and they look the same, they're acting kind of the same, you know, there might be a few changes here or there, um, but but you don't see the indelible mark, so to speak. Does that make sense? And, mm -hmm. and, and yet I wonder if we actually thought about it just even a little bit, um, what baptism does to us, it incorporates us into Christ, like we are, we become part of his body. Mm -hmm. um, you wonder if it might have an effect on how we live, if we if we actually consciously thought about it. Well, that's why I think the example of Paul is so good that he brings up in this tremendous teaching is that for Paul, people, and you're right, you don't see a physical change. Your body looks the same when you're done, maybe a little wet, you gotta dry yourself <laughs> off, yeah, exactly. you know, but there, it doesn't look different. What you they smell saw better. in Paul, yeah, they saw in Paul was the man who was going out and preaching death was now preaching life and was willing to surrender to death. Mm -hmm. It's that dramatic. And that's what we have to be like for the world. We have to show the world what it looks like that's by our actions and how we love. Amen. Amen. Good stuff from St. Basil the Great. Tuesday of Holy Week in the Office of Readings. We've been talking about it with Chris McGregor. And you can find discerninghearts.com linked at sunrisemorningshow.com Chris a blessed rest of your holy week and a happy Easter as well thank you you're welcome and prayers for all those who will be received in the church this yes, Saturday absolutely we are praying and fasting with you this week well that'll do it for this national edition of the sunrise morning show may God bless you and keep you and grant you his peace Family, because of your love for Sacred Heart Radio, we only need to raise another 15000 to hit our $120,000 membership drive goal. So if you've been considering joining the family to fully participate in the media distribution of the good news, then activate your membership now by going to sacredheartradio.com and clicking donate or use Venmo at Sacred Heart Radio. Thanks, welcome to the family, and please tell everyone about Sacred Heart Radio and the Sacred Heart Radio app. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Molly Maid of Westchester. With 30 years of trusted, quality service and a 100% satisfaction guarantee. 1-800-MOLLY-MAID or at mollymaid.com. Molly Maid, a clean you can trust. Support for Sacred Heart Radio is from Sunset Janitorial Supply, a Catholic family business supplying the tri-state cleaning industry with commercial cleaning supplies, personal hygiene, equipment, and even machine repair. Free delivery to your business. More information at sunsetjanitorialsupply.com. Hi, I'm Anna Mitchell, MC for Heartbeats for Life 5K, sponsored by Cincinnati Right to Life, Saturday, April 20th at Lunkin Airport Playfield. It's a day of food, family, and fun to keep hearts beating in Ohio. Register at CincinnatiRightToLife.org. 
A wedding is a day. A marriage is a lifetime. Catholic Engaged Encounter Weekends are a marriage preparation program led by married couples and a priest or deacon. This is time for a couple to learn about each other and their upcoming marriage. Based on communication, intimacy, and the family they grew up in. Find out more at cincinnati-covington.engagedencounter.com. That's cincinnati-covington.engagedencounter.com. This is John Kennedy, a State Farm agent serving Northern Kentucky and Cincinnati and a proud supporter of Sacred Heart Radio. Whether it's home, auto, or life insurance, I can help with any of your insurance needs. I can be reached at 859-485-2000 or online at johnkennedyinsurance.com. The Cincinnati Chapter of Legatus is a national network of Catholic business owners, CEOs, and managing partners facing the challenges of faith, family, and business each day. We meet once a month with our spouse for a mass, dinner, and speaker. We have the support of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati and many members throughout the parishes, including yours. We would appreciate the chance to share what we are about with you and enjoy mass together soon. Contact us at cincinnatiatlegatus.org. That's cincinnatiatlegatus.org. Hi, I'm Mara Cagney-Tipton with the Cagney Family and Kowal Banker Realty, proud to support Sacred Heart Radio. Are you a first-time home buyer or seller? We're looking to build your dream home. We can help you at any phase of life. 513-720-1411. This is Father Benedict Kinsla, the pastor of Our Lady of Victory in Delhi. Thank you for listening to Sacred Heart Catholic Radio. 740 WNOP Newport, 910 WPFB Middletown, or get the app, stream, podcast, and more at sacredheartradio.com. Arise, it's a new day. Hear his word. Sunrise morning show. 